First up, we have the Iowa. I feel like I know that we all believe Iowa got shadow nerfed, and I do see that there is inconsistency in this ship. But looking at how Iowa can normally work, she is consistently somewhat accurate. She has a fairly decent health pool, fairly decent speed, fairly decent maneuverability, long acting damage control, and yeah. I I do feel like since the quote unquote shadow nerf that we cannot confirm, but it it just feels like because I mean, why would they word Missouri with old Iowa AP or old Iowa uh, old Iowa AP speed? So you know, but Iowa is still easily one of the best ships in the game in terms of consistently accurate main guns and. Really a forgiving playstyle. Just be careful with your broadside. <sighs> yeah, Iowa, I still think is A. She's still over the rail. I don't think she's S, because I think there are better battleships to play than Iowa, but she's still very strong. Kansas, pre-buff Kansas was a hard C, maybe a B. Now, I feel like she's a hard high B. She's a very high B because she has the heaviest broadside in the game. Well, the second heaviest, but the heaviest in the tech tree. And the salvo is accurate. So I really want to put her in A, but it's just that speed kind of holds her back at top tier. Because at, at tier 7, we've kind of graduated from the slow standard types onto the more speedy factions or just... Like ship's able to reposition with a little bit more speed. Her her accuracy is insane, and her shell grouping is nice. Like she can absolutely smack broadsides, but just that low speed and the giant hunk of metal that she is kind of has told her back for being a tier. Exactly. With the issue with Kansas is that there's Iowa. Exactly. All right, Alabama. S tier. I know that there's been some trolley accuracy as of late, but let's look at the facts. She has the best torpedo protection in the game. She has consistently accurate made guns. She has great maneuverability, great speed, great AA. Like, what's not to like about Alabama? I guess you can say legendary and up-tiered, but in Tier 7 matches... Alabama is one of the most dominant ships in the game. Like, yeah, she may not have the speed of the Iowa's guns, but, I mean, she still has 16-inch guns. What's not to like? Missouri. A tier. All she is, all she is, is an Iowa with radar. Yep. I believe the South Dakota-class battleships have a 49% torpedo reduction. 49%, if I remember correctly. That's better than, uh, well, Yami has the best. Yami has 53%, I believe. But, you know, for in, in non-legendary ships, Alabama has the best. Same thing with NASA. Yeah, Missouri, it's the same thing. She's just an, uh, an Iowa with radar. That's all she is. She does have a fast acting heel. But, I mean, we all know this. That it's all common. But, yeah, other than that, she's just an Iowa with a little bit less hit points and radar. That's it. Exactly. They are also consistent. Once again, great speed, great maneuverability, but just all she uses is an Iowa with radar. So there's no point in putting one above the other. They're just exactly the same. One just has radar. Massachusetts, S tier. One of the best brawlers in this game. It's, it's the same thing. She has the same torpedo protection. She has the same 16 inch guns, albeit though you're not going to be building for accuracy as often. You can put an accuracy build on NASA, but you're going to be missing out on those secondaries. Because you can have like 11 kilometer secondaries with five heels, and your secondaries can set fires basically without mercy. They can just, on a whim, just set fires to anything within their range. Because they're not only are they accurate, but they're also a great fire starters. Fire starters. Because they may not be able to pen like the German secondaries can with her HE, or get the good AP volleys of the Japanese secondaries. But, their sheer fire starting chance is insane. 
yeah, they're also very, very, very agile. They're even more so than the Amos because they are shorter. They have less, <laughs> less ship to turn, so they have a faster turning radius. Combined with that, great torpedo protection really helps you fight against destroyers. Exactly. They're also some of the most fun ships to play because they're consist they perform consistently above average, if not some of the best in the game. And like they just they're built for success. South Dakotas are some of the best in the game. Georgia. I feel like Georgia is an A because she's really accurate and you really kinda wanna build for her main guns. But if she had the secondaries that she had on PC, she would be an S tier. Because Georgia on PC has like an 8 kilometer secondary, or like an actually usable brawler secondary. Hey, Owen's just an agile too, exactly. But um, Georgia having those 457s is nice, low shell volume, but really accurate main guns. But it is not having that secondary, it's kind of, it, it's kind of holding her back. Yeah, like, I mean, still choke. Yeah, it's just barely under 50%. That's insane. Like, GK doesn't even have that. But Georgia not having those secondaries kind of holds it back because that either turns her into a sniper with speed boost on a flank, or you can go with full secondary build. But then, in that case, why not just play Massa? Why not just play Bismarck? You're kind of giving up those 457s. So, Georgia is a great ship. Great utility, the fast reloading heal, and also the it's slightly improved heal because you get a little bit more of that. And speed boost, faster reload than the Iowas and the South Dakotas, even with bigger guns. Yes, you have less shells, but you reload faster and they're arguably more accurate. But yeah, yeah, having those nerf secondaries kind of hold her back from being the probably the best tier 7 battleship in the game. Great ship, but just held back by that one. Lion, C tier, great AA, um, decent armor for a tier seven battleship. It's pretty decent, but let's a, a great AP, great short fuse AP, and great HE. Now let's discuss the cons. Horrid firing angles. You have to basically turn full broadside to even think about using all of your guns in a single salvo. Exposed citadel. It goes away from the British tradition of having a protected citadel. So when turning broadside, basically anything can citadel you. Uh, depending on the range, anything can basically citadel you, except destroyers. Exactly. Here's to hoping Ohio secondaries don't get nerfed. But Lion... It, it's got poor firing angles. Poor armor to protect its its citadel on its broadside. It's got poor turret traverse, and it's the typical boxy turrets, so they get knocked easily. So, like, why play Lion over Vanguard? You're trading even worse firing angles just to get bigger guns. Like, in all honesty, why not just play Monarch? <laughs> Like, yeah, Lion, <laughs> she's a good ship in in terms of, like, HE spamming battleship or, like, broadsiding cruiser to leader, but solo carrying can be hard because you're either going to be bow tanking and spamming HE, or if you, you even think about trying to turn broadside to bring all guns to bear, you can just easily be blasted. So, strong ship. Yeah, you have super heal, but, I mean, you kind of need it because... You're slow. You, you, like you go away from the British thing of like having maneuverable and like agile battleships. This ship, it's it, it takes to the conquer with the slow turret traverse, the slow rudder shift. It just there's a lot of cons, and I don't really think they outweigh the pros too much. So I think Lion's a hard C tier. Vanguard's the same because it it only has 15 inch guns. They are accurate, but they have very poor firing angles. Not really reliable armor. Like, yeah, when cop broadside, I mean, most battleships can be Citadel, but I mean, especially with the British, especially Vanguard. Um, only having those 15s kind of hurt with overmatch. 
Exactly. <sighs> but, yeah, you kind of lack that overmatch. Yeah, you can spam HE, but, I mean, there's better ships to spam HE with, a.k.a. Monarch, because there's more 15-inch guns, or Lion, because they are bigger guns. Vanguard does have pretty good speed and pretty decent maneuverability. But, I mean, she doesn't have strong of an AA suite as Lion, so. I don't think, uh, the buff to Vanguard's accuracy did help her. I don't think she's bad enough to be in D, but she's not strong enough to be in B. She, so she's going to be right with Lion and C. Rish Liu. Alright. Peak may call heresy upon me, but I only have 381, so they kind of lack overmatch but having speed boost really helps you get to positions that you want to get in faster her guns they're not rail guns like Iowa or Kansas or the South Dakotas but they are fairly accurate they have a decent reload time she has fairly decent armor great AA and pretty reliable armor. Like, yeah, the turrets are the turrets, but we all know that French turrets are like that. So, I don't think Richelieu is as strong as the Iowas and Georgia and some others. Oh, 380s, my bad. The Germans at 381. My bad. But, um, yeah, the, the, French, the, the Richelieu is still a very strong ship. Very well performer, especially being able to sit bow in. Oh, how many times in British? My bad. Yeah, being able to sit bow in with all your firepower to bear front is, is very good, especially when holding up against an island, holding a flank down. I don't think it's enough to put them in line with the Iowas, but having that speed boost and that maneuverability and just overall speed to able to position yourself the way you want to, it, it, it's a very underrated tool. And yeah, so I'm going to put the Richelieu in B. That's another thing I forgot to discuss. All the Americans have just insanely good AA. British have, except for Lion, they have okay. Lion's great. Vanguard and Monarch are eh. The French are all good. Well, Richelieu and John Bart are good. Champagne and Gascon are not so much. Alright, next up. I believe this is Gascon. Gascon's rough because she's a Richelieu with one turret for one turret aft. So she needs to turn broadside or or over angle to bring all guns to bear. And that can be kind of rough when exposing your broadside in a French battleship. So now she also doesn't have a great HP pool. It's not as bad as Champagne, but it's not great. I think it's like 65,000. She does have a decent reload, 100 her main guns, but once again, they're only 380s, and being able to only bring nearly one turret to bear without having to overangle can kind of hurt. They're best played on a flank, but it's kind of hard to solo carry on one flank, because then you're not in a position to really help the others, the other flank. Because really, the key to winning any game is just holding middle, so that way you can go to either flank, and whichever one is losing to help set up a crossfire. That, that's really the way you win games, is, is holding the middle. Yeah, Scone does have Vicious AA. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I think the speed boost is nice for maneuverability, but just the poor firing angles on her main guns. Like She really does have to over-angle. Champagne's the, in the same boat. Like They're really good ag in agile situations, and like on flanks, but other than that, I mean... They can't bow tank because then they lose half of their firepower. And in order to bring their firepower to bear, they have to open up. And they can easily be citadel when they do that. So they don't have the strength of the Richelieu and the Jean Bart of being able to just bow in with all their firepower. They have to expose themselves to bring it all to bear. And they can easily be touched for that. They're great ships. They have pretty decent, they have reliable HE and reliable AP, but yeah, it's it's the poor turret armor too. They if, if they're trying to bow tank with one turret and it gets knocked out, they have no choice. They lose half their firepower and they lose the firepower in half their ship. Yeah. 
So the poor turret placement plus the poor turret well poor turret placement plus the poor ability to use both of those turrets kind of haunts these ships. Great A uh, great AA, great maneuverability. Uh, that's really about it. And yeah, exactly. Georgia exists. Georgia exists. John Bart, S tier. We all know it. <laughs> Reload booster on a battleship is just absolutely broken. I know it exists on Vanguard, but I mean, you'll, you only get one on Vanguard. John Bart, you get two. And you can get this thing's reload down to like 19 seconds. It, it's so dumb. It has the same insanely good AA as the American battleships. It, it's just as fast. Like, the utility that this thing has is insane. John Bart is easily just the best, one of the best, if not the best, tier 7 battleship. Okay. The Kriegsmarine has arrived. Alright, first up, Bismarck. After the buff, A tier. Hear me out. Bismarck has great secondaries and fairly accurate main guns if you build for them. They may not have the 20 the 27 millimeter open maps, but they can still slap a shit with their improved pen angles. Still a very strong AP. And their HE has the quarter pen, so they can easily um, shred things that get caught in secondary range. Also, she has access to Hydro, so she's really good at brawling, and destroyer, brawling against destroyers. And it's 6 kilometers instead of 5. So, really powerful Hydro and great secondaries makes a great cat brawler. You just have to be careful. And it, once again, German battleships excel in the late game when there are less ships to spam. So, Bismarck is easily A tier. She was also my first tier 7, so she's the ship I know how to play in, in reality the most in this game. Now, here's the thing with Turpins. Arguably, she has the same accuracy as Bismarck, and yes, she has torpedoes, but l let's be honest here. When Turpins is trying to push in to try and even use her torpedoes from, like, 10, 11 kilometers and she's being spammed, her torpedo tubes get knocked out very easily. Very easily. I love brawling in turpets, but the fact that you can't put concealment mod on those battleships yet and you have to be exposed pushing in kind of hurts. Great accuracy. Not as good as secondaries as Bismarck. She doesn't have access to Hydro. So I think I'm going to put her I'm gonna put. I don't. I don't think Turpitz does have the same secondary. I don't remember that being that way. I, I remember Bismarck having a higher stock secondary range. I could be wrong, but um, this I, Bismarck's going to be better than Turpitz, just because of the hydro, better secondaries. Turpitz did get a bigger buff, but I mean Bismarck already like. I had a 23 second reload, 22 second reload on her main gun. Well, yeah, that's if you fully build for it, though, and then you kind of give up your main gun accuracy on turpids. Alright, Odin. Odin's an A tier. Odin is a really underrated boat. She is extremely tanky. She has the same hydro. She can shatter some HE shells. Now, of course, fire is still a pain in the ass, as all German battleships know. But she can have great secondary range. She can has really fast reload on her main guns. She she's all in all just a great brawler. She's really just a stronger version of Scharnhorst and Geniza now. Yeah, Turpitz does have torps, but I mean, what are the, like what use do the torps serve if you're just going to be he spammed all game? When you can use the torps, yes, it's going to be better. But that's only when you can actually get close enough to the battleships. Or cruise that you can't even torpedo. I'm not saying Turpitz is a bad boat, but I'm just saying in this situation, Bismarck is the better pick. But yeah, Odin. Odin has always been performing above average. So, I mean, we all know. Exactly. She is the big boat. She, she was one of the designs for Sharnors, but in this game, for some reason, she's the higher tier. Oh, I might I might come back to the turpits later. I might do it because of the buff. 
but I I just feel like there's just the small little differences that put her behind Bismarck. Well, no, but I mean, have you seen the accuracy of the German secondaries? <laughs> it's not exactly the same as Massey's. Hmm. I just feel like solo carry potential. Here, I'll put her high B. High B for right now. I might come back to her later. We'll see. Roma. I'm not going to be unfair and throw her into D or F tier. Roma has great armor. Her 50mm deck can shatter a lot of HE. And obviously her armor is good enough to battle tank battleships. Really, the only thing she has to worry about is fire. But, um... She only has 15-inch guns, uh, 381s. So, why would you want to play a quote-unquote Russian-style battleship with lower caliber, gu lower caliber guns when Vladi exists, when, when Lenin exists? Um, her accuracy... Uh, I know she doesn't have an accuracy commander, but, I mean, even then, it's not as good as some of the other battleships out there. It still is pretty decent. It can still slap broadsides, but it's it's not as consistent as other ships. Her secondaries, they are even rougher than the Americans, even though the Americans are great fire starters. These are the Italian secondaries are not because they're only 90 millimeters, so they can't pen anything, and they have even worse fire chances. So um Roma, very underrated ship, but we haven't really lived up to her potential. She hasn't lived up to her potential yet. So for right now, right now, Roma will be in C tier. It's kind of un... She, she's kind of like that wild card. We don't really know what she's going to be like with an accuracy commander on. She's not powerful enough to really be great at solo carrying, but she's not like horribly weak like some of the other ships all right turpits i am moving in to be up to a tier because of the brawling potential plus the buffs to accuracy the the germans are making a comeback with that buff i do have to agree there we go they're not any not any higher though not any higher i'm i'm barely squeezing turpits in barely odin is is going to be much better than turpits much much better but i will put turpits in Exactly. Exactly. They have less HP. Doing that for you and you alone, Noriko. I'll barely squeeze in Turpets to A. And now comes something that absolutely pains my heart. Amagi. Amagi used to be so good. Amagi used to be so good. Amagi and Iowa used to be the two ships in the game you wanted to get first because they had absolute railguns. But, man, oh man, all those those two and a half years ago when they nerfed Amagi for the first time, it, it showed. It showed what they did to Amagi. It wasn't nice. It was because people the people that wanted to play the Amagi were the good players that knew how to play Amagi correctly and play her to her strengths. She still is a great ship. She still has 10, 410 millimeter guns. She still has really great speed. But man, oh man, Amagi has fallen from grace. She still is strong, but she's nowhere what she she's nowhere to where she what she she is nowhere near what she used to be. Exactly. Amagi is still scary. Be careful. Amagi can still slap your shit, but is she on the same level as Iowa and Missouri and Georgia? And South Dakotas, and Bismarck and Turpets, no. Exactly, exactly. So if if we are to learn one thing from all of these tech tree ratings, this is it. Well, besides obviously bringing in Italian battleships and the German battle cruisers one day, the third thing the third thing we need to learn is bring back old Amagi, bring back old Iowa. It's what we want. It's what's best for the game. Well, I, I did Mikasa. I, I did. There was only 
I, I would do the lower tiers, but I kind of want to do the higher tiers because it's kind of like for what people want to grind for. But yeah, I um, I want to put a Magi in A so badly, but she just she struggles to compete against other battleships unless she gets that perfect broadside and she's in the perfect position already turned with all of her guns to bear. Other than that, it, it just yeah exactly it, the armor and the broadside that I have to give up for all my guns. It doesn't warrant that nerf. And it's really sad because Amagi used to be so much better. I still like to play her, but yeah, she's definitely fallen from grace. And it is very sad. Key. Key has a very strong AA suite. She has torpedoes, but they're very short range. And she's actually a pretty decent brawler build. Like she has a very like a powerful AAC, powerful AA suite, pretty decent secondaries. Torps and 400 tons, but her guns. Oh boy, if you're gonna snipe, you might as well just play a Magi. I think Key is a C. She's not a great brawler because, the, like I said, majority of her firepower is aft. So pushing in, she can obviously charge just fine. But I mean, only having those low low kilometer torpedoes. And only having three per side kind of hurts because I mean you're pushing in and exposing all that much of yourself just to launch three torps. But um, key. It, it just if you're gonna play it like a sniper, just play a Magi. A Magi is gonna be better pick for that. But brawling wise, they're just better ships to brawl with. Key does have better armor. Yeah, that that is true. That is true. But is it worth having less accurate main guns? Because impenetrable, impenetrable armor is just ir is pointless against fire and damage over time. That's something we need to need to think about. She may have better armor, but I mean, if a key tries to brawl, play to her strengths, it, and she's just farmed or just burned down from range, there's. <sighs> I don't think Key is at the same competitive level as the rest of these. She still is okay. I think she's stronger than Roma, but I don't think she's as strong as these two. And these are all stronger. Vladivostok. Vladdy is daddy. <laughs> I don't, mm, yeah, I don't think she's as strong as Lennon because of the turret placement, but she is still very very strong. Great armor to shatter HE. Great guns that can absolutely slap your shit. Pretty decent maneuverability, and pretty decent tankiness. Decent turret traverse. You just have to be careful for those Parzivals of the world out there and. And ever showing your broadside just a little too much. But just the power of that ship to just hold a bow in position is matched by few others. Very few others. Exactly. Vlad is like, you have to have the perfect, it's like Goldilocks. You can't be too far away because then you get trolled by the Russian long range accuracy. That just goes to shit. You can't be too close because then you're just going to get citadel because just have a raised citadel it's the entire length of your ship you have to find that nice middle ground like around 10 to like 12 kilometers and just maintain that range but wait i know it, but yeah like you need to find the right range to just maintain it and just maintain that engagement distance you can't let them close and you can't let them run away so position yourself to maintain that range and you'll be set and vladdy will do the rest lennon I mean, it, is it even a question? Is it even a question to put Lennon in S tier? Is is it really? Because I don't think it is. You can have all nine guns facing front, and then you can just do you can pull a Nelson to switch around. And because for some reason your turrets can do three sixty, well the top turret can do three sixty. You can always have all th all three guns to bear. You just do a juke, and then you can turn your guns to the left and juke. And then she can also, she has the same tanky armor as Vladdy. 32 mm bow, 15 mm deck. She's 
I'd probably say a little more superstructure to farm, but she's also a lot more maneuverable than Bladding is. That's just me though. But yeah, Lennon is easily an S tier. Lennon is still very, very powerful. Oh shit, that was Monarch. <laughs> so, Monarch, I think. Mm. She has an even lower HP pool. I think we can move Vanguard up here. Because, in terms of agility, Vanguard is the best British battleship. Yeah. Monarch and Lion are down here. Because just the poor firing angles, the low HP pool, and the. Yeah, they have super heal, but just the poor firing angles and the. Exposed Citadel kind of hurts them. They're still great ships, though, but yeah, I think Vanguard's better pick because you have more speed, more agility. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there it is. Tier seven battleships. We have Alabama, Massa, John Bart, and Lennon in S tier. We have Vladdy, Iowa, Missouri, Georgia, Bismarck, Odin, Turpitz in A tier. Kansas, Richelieu, Amagi, and Vanguard in B tier. Monarch, Lion, Key, Roma in C tier. And then Gascon and Champagne in D tier. You think Lion's better than Vanguard? Th th that is true. Mm. The thing is with Lion, though, it's like I said earlier. The pros, I, in my opinion, they don't outweigh the cons. Because she doesn't have the 419s like she can have on PC. She only has the 406s. Yes, she can still overmatch, but she only has the 406s. She has very poor firing angles, a lower HP pool than most ships at the tier. Huh. Like, And all she has going for her is like... You can't really say the armor protection because, like, yeah, her belt can bounce, but I mean, well, yes, her belt can bounce shells, but all other, all the other battleships can do that too. When caught broadside, she has an exposed citadel, so she's pretty easy to citadel. She's slow. Her turrets take a while to turn. They can be knocked out easily because they have the British box turrets. Well, I'm not saying she's bad. I'm just saying compared to other ships. I guess she has super heal, but Monarch also has super heal, and she still has like 54,000 hit points. <laughs> hey, the more you talk about it, the more I'm starting to agree. I think Lion is better, but barely. Lion is only barely better. Her Her cons, like her pros and her cons barely outweigh Vanguard's pros and cons. But you could easily flip between these two. So the only switch is Lion is now in B, Vanguard's in C. But yeah, Lion is... It, it can be rough. She's a good ship, but it, it can be rough sometimes. No, no, I know Lion's worth. I have Lion. I've played Lion. But like I'm saying, the, the question you have to ask yourself is, do all of these cons outweigh... Well, do all of these pros outweigh the, the many cons? That's the question you have to ask yourself. All right, that's it for Tier 7 Battleships. If you agree with my ranking of these ships, let me know in the comments down below. If you disagree, let me know. Give me suggestions. I kind of enjoy having these discussions and talking with everybody about what their own opinions are because then we get to all learn things we might not have learned before. Yeah, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out, guys.